Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is part two uh, of TIG welding aluminum using argon and then argon and helium mix on some eighth inch thick, some 3.2 millimeter thick aluminum. So what I'm going to do is a, a very quick recap of part one, kind of refresh your memory, and then I'm going to use this swag off-road portaband stand to section those welds with. Now, I made some extra coin a few weeks ago, and I actually shot the video of me make, making these parts. There were, there were about 50 parts, and they're steel parts, and so I got paid for that and used some of the money to buy this, which I have always wanted. Now, I built one of these myself for a Porter Cable Porter Band several years ago, handiest thing in the shop, but that one was kind of on loan while I was in the shop with my machinist friend, so he needs that one back. And uh, so I got my own setup here. The porter band can be taken off when I want to use it for portable jobs, but I'm going to use this to slice those welds with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the puddle again, and then right about where I make the cut, I'm going to freeze the frame so you can see the puddle, and then you can see the cross-section, polish, etch, result, depth of penetration, all that stuff all at once. And you can correlate the two, like that puddle looks kind of cold, that's what it looks like. That puddle looks nice and hot, that's what it looks like. All right, let's get going. I can't help but show you this little gravy TIG job here where I made the extra cash to buy that swag off-road portaband stand. Fun little job, paid really well, so I had some cash and I wanted to buy myself something, a tool. And the settings for this on this inverter with all these bells and whistles were 200 amps, 50% pulse time, 40% background, and one and a half pulses a second. That worked out really well. But for this video, using this very basic Lincoln TIG 175 with hardly any settings on it, and actually there's a lot to be said for a simple unit like this, especially if you mix helium in. So right here I'm just using straight argon. You can see, limited at 100 amps, how slow of a go it is. This is real time, just barely hot enough to weld this 8th inch thick, 3.2 millimeter thick material. But add helium to the mix by using a little Y there and just barely floating each ball to about 5 CFH. Look how quick the travel speed picks up. 100 amps, full pedal, just like I was with the straight argon but the travel speed is at least 50% quicker. It took a minute 40 to do the first weld and 57 seconds to do the weld with helium added. Well now it's time to section those welds and polish and etch and check the depth of penetration and see what we find out. So first I'm going to cut up the one done with straight argon and with this little fence attachment that's a piece of cake. Now if you already have a portaband, a DeWalt or a Milwaukee Go over to Swag Off-Road, check out what he's got. He's got a lot of cool tools over there. I highly recommend his stuff. I'm not getting anything out of this other than I just want to do the guy a solid because he's a good guy. All right, then once, this, once both of those are cut, I'm going to polish using this uh, red color Scotch-Brite pad here, this 3M Rolock Scotch-Brite pad. And you can almost see the outline of the weld already without even etching it. Now, if you get a really fine polish on it, it etches a lot better, but that's about as fine as I want to fool with, and I'm going to etch it with this easy-off, heavy-duty oven cleaner. There's lots of household products that will etch aluminum. It just takes a little while. It takes a little longer on some than others. I've used certain types of Drano even that work pretty good. But you can see I got a little subsurface porosity and not that much penetration. Barely got in there. Barely got in there, and it looks like it looks like that. When you look at it right here, it's barely getting down into the root of the joint, and even you can see a little, a little fine pore right there. So it's not surprising I got a little subsurface porosity in that weld. This is the stuff you learn when you cut stuff and etch it right after you weld it while it's still fresh on your mind. And of course, while you have a chance to review the arc footage and then you can really see stuff like I'm doing on for this part two video I saw some things I didn't even see when I was welding it now here's the helium the joint done with argon helium mix much deeper penetration no porosity got in there same 100 amps 100 amp setting just increase the travel speed and increase the penetration quite a bit so here's the arc shot there of a roughly where I made the section right about there and here you see the nugget profile it's actually kind of surprising it's more than it looked like it would be because that helium is like magic. Now, coming soon, I'm doing a DCEN, DC TIG welding using 100% helium. That's a whole different animal. You can see going here on some thick aluminum, this is close to three quarter inch thick plate, and it's dark and sooty, but it's really penetrating in there nice. It looks different, doesn't look as pretty, but it's got its use, and I'll explain that in the next video. Look at the depth of penetration that that weld got. And then on the other hand, look at the little pour that it got. So everything's got a little trade-off to it. 
I am working hard on getting that DC aluminum video done and it should be out in a week or two. All right, we'll see you next video.